shape tweening works a little bit differently than the motion tweening. Whereas the motion tweening, if you remember, we created an instance and that instance we were able to move across and we were to create motion as we needed to. With shape tweening, we're not going to be using instances because of the fact that an instance, we're not going to be able to tween the shape of it. So we're going to be creating a circle or an oval shape here. We've got to keep the shapes as simple as possible. So I'm just going to eliminate here the stroke of it, the green outline of it. And I'm also going to create on selecting a, just any random frame here. I'm going to select a keyframe here on number 20. So I've made a keyframe and I'm going to erase this out. And I'm just going to draw a square in keyframe number 20. So we've got a circle or oval shape in keyframe number 1 and keyframe number 20 we've got a square shape. So we're going to create the same way that we did the motion tween, we're going to do the shape tweening where we would select any uh, one of the in-between frames here and we would select shape and we can see that automatically we've done our shape tweening and we can see the way that the shape takes form. We can play it and we can see how our circle turns into the square. We've got some some options here for the shape tweening. We've got the easing just like in the motion where we've got in and we've got out. So we can see that the, the difference between the in, see how it starts out slow and then it moves out faster. If we've change the out, the ease to 92, we'll see the opposite, that in the beginning it's going to be fast and in the end it's going to be slow. So it's just the same as the motion where we're changing the easing. We've got another option here where we're able to do the blending where we've got distributive and angular. So if we select angular, angular is better if we've got a sharp edge to, or straight lines in our shape and the distributive is better if we don't. So we're just going to keep it at distributive for now. With this simple shape you can't really see too much of a difference between the distributive and angular but if you are using maybe a little bit more complex of a shape. Now if you want to blend let's say two ovals into one square you're also able to do that. You're not able to do this on the motion where you've got an instance. If you were to place another instance on the motion tweening you'd be coming up with some problems. Here although we're able to create another another oval shape and we're going to see that both the oval shapes combine together to form the square. So in this, effect, in this matter the shape tweening we've got a few different things that we can do than the motion tweening. I'm going to go ahead and erase this out and we're going to talk about the shape hints. Just like in the motion tweening where we're able to guide flash a little bit in the direction that we want the tweening to take place. In the shape tweening we're able to add shape guides by selecting over to modify, going down to shape and selecting add shape hint where we can press control shift H. And you can see here that a small circle with uh, an A in the middle of it has been added and this is our shape hint. We can place this to the part of our object that we don't want to be transforming in the same way. We can see also that in our last keyframe we've had a shape hint which is added and we can maneuver this too to wherever we want it or wherever we feel necessary to help guide Flash in shaping this particular shape in the way that we want it. So it's changed a little bit of the way that Flash transforms the circle to the square. We can see that it's taking a hint from the top there and it brings it down to the bottom. We can go ahead and play it and you can see that it's no longer the same as it was before. This is better if you've got extruding parts to your shape 
maybe if you don't want to change some particular elements of the two different shapes you're able to add the shape hints in as you feel necessary and adjust the transforming of the between the two different objects the next topic that we're going to be talking about is masking so I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to open up a new a new uh, file here and we're going to look at it we can um, masking what it does is it's like looking into the layer below so on layer one here I'm just going to rename this to our background to, so we can get a good feel of what the masking is all about just going to put a blue background here I'm going to insert a second layer and a third layer above it the second layer I'm going to rename to object and the third layer I'm going to rename to mask and now I'm just going to create some blank keyframes here along the end I'm going to select area number 20 create uh, some blank frames here and these are blank frames and I'm going to create an object in this area that's going to be basically it's going to be an oval shape and a color it red so we can distinguish it from the background and I'm going to actually I'm going to group it together by pressing control G or I could go up to modify and I could press group like this because I'm going to create a motion between a cross and then I'm going to mask the area and we're going to only be able to see when we play the movie we're only going to be able to see the masked area so I'm going to create a keyframe here in number 20 and then and in the middle here select properties and motion going to go to frame number 20 we're going to move the oval shape down so now what we see is we've got an oval shape that moves across the entire screen when we play it or if we go to here to test window fairly simple we have the oval shape moving across now for masking to work what I want is I don't want to see the oval shape coming off the edges here of the blue part so I'm gonna create this layer that I named masked I'm just gonna select it right click it and go to mask and what this does is this automatically masks the layer beneath it so we can see that object now has been put into the mask I'm gonna unlock it and I'm gonna select the first the first uh, frame here which is a keyframe and I'm going to create a rectangular shaped mask across the background here so it's going to be the same as the background and I'm going to lock it and now we can see that when the object moves across we no longer see the exterior of it but we still see the background so when we go to play test the movie we've achieved the goal that I wanted to which was only in the beginning seeing part of it as if it was coming in from the screen and in the end only seeing part of it come off so we're only able to see what's underneath the mask even if the background was bigger which I'm going to take and I'm just going to readjust it larger here the mask area still stays the same and we can see how it disappears into the end here where it has been masked we can show masking or we can not show it so here we've got the show masking is is on so we're showing what has been masked the mask doesn't affect layers that are beneath it I can change the color of the background here and it's not going to affect the mask the mask is still the same if I bring this background underneath the mask we have gotta keep it below the object so we can still see the object now what we're gonna see now when we play it show the masking 
we can see that when we when we don't have show masking selected we don't see what's being masked and now we can see that the background has been placed into the mask also and we're only able to see the area that once again is cut out from the mask it doesn't matter what what color I can change the mask to any color I want it doesn't matter if I change the shape of it it is going to change the shape of what is being masked so I can move it down here lock it and we can see now how it's been affected and changed that our masking area is what's changing the color of it and doesn't seem to doesn't make a difference we color it the, whatever way we want it it's just taking the basic shape that we've used for the masking process